In this video, we're going to work a little bit with advanced symbology. So to begin, I'm using one of the sample data sets we had from class, the Staten Island Confidential Clinic locations, where people can get various STD tests uh, confidentially. And so in this case, we have three clinics, and we also have New York borough boundaries, but I'm zoomed in on New York. So we already learned in a previous lesson that when we're doing a very simple, straightforward map, that the online services that Esri provides can be very helpful for fleshing out some of our basic information, and it certainly saves us a lot of time. So in this example, I'm using something that I've already downloaded by going to File and Add Data from Resource Center, which again takes me to this web page and I can find the appropriate online mapping service that I'm interested in and download it, which I've already done. And when I turn that on, I get some very nice cartographic representation of, of various features in and around my area on the map. Now, when I'm working with something like this, I, I may want to do some final tweaks to both uh, say my New York borough boundaries and of course my clinic locations. So starting with the New York borough boundaries, very simply I can change my symbol type by either right clicking on the layer name and going to properties and then going to the symbology tab or if I want a quicker way to get into the symbology options I can simply click on the symbol. Now from here, remember that in ArcGIS we have a lot of various levels that we can get to, so we can continue to dig deeper in the software and, and find uh, increasingly complex things that we can do with, with a number of steps, and that includes working with symbols. So when we're working it with the simple symbol selector at this point, I can simply find another color that I like, change the fill color, or I can change the out width or the outline width and outline color. But what I really might want to do is create something that's a better cartographic representation of my boundaries. And so to do that, if I don't find exactly what I'm looking for here, I have a couple of options. First, I can go to the More Symbols button, and when this opens, I can select additional categories of symbols that may give me other representations based on a number of predefined categories that Esri's included. And so when I select a category and now scroll down, I see that I have some added choices. Now, if this isn't giving me quite what I want, the next option that I have is I can simply go into the properties for my particular symbol and begin doing some more detailed editing here. And for boundaries, maybe one of the things that I want to do is get rid of the fill color and maybe do some very simple tweaks to the outline. So, by clicking on the Outline button, I can come to the Line Feature Symbol Selector, and we already have some nice options for various boundaries. So maybe I find one that I like, and from here, I can begin tweaking it as I wish. I want to change the line width again. I can go deeper in the software again, clicking properties, and begin working with the line itself, changing everything from the line caps and line joins to the actual width of the line. Now, once I've done this and I have something that I think is a decent representation for, for what I want to do, I simply click OK a couple of times. And now you see that I have this new representation. Now clearly you may run into cases where you've spent a fair amount of time setting up a couple of these and you like them and you want to reuse them. And fortunately, you also have the option to save these. So if this is something that I would like to use for a future project. I can simply click on Save. And for the symbol name, maybe I'll give it something 
fairly intuitive, so I remember what it was representing when I first created it. And then I simply set up my own category. And a category is going to show up in my drop-down menu, just like the preloaded, predefined Esri categories. So in this case, maybe I'll call it QDGIS. And click OK. So we see my new symbol is now available here. I can click OK, and now my symbol representation has changed, where I don't have any fill any longer, and now I have this nice outline. Now, if I go back into my symbol selector, go up to the category pull-down menu, I'll see I have this new category, CUNY GIS, and if I select it, I'll see any symbols that I have listed under that category. Now another trick with symbology is that sometimes I want to indicate some shape, but maybe I want to apply a simple transparency to it. So an easy way to do that is to give my shape some fill color, click OK, and now go back into the layer properties, either by right clicking and going to properties or simply by double clicking on the layer. And from here I can click on the display tab and you'll see that I have this option to actually make my layer transparent. So we'll try 50 percent and now if I hit OK I'll see that I still have the representation of the shape but I have my other features showing through and clearly you can change the transparency as you see fit. Alright, so that's working with my polygon symbology. Next, if I want to start working with my point symbology, I have similar options. I can click on the point, go into my symbol selector, and there's a number of different things that we can do with the points. Uh, similar to the polygon layers, I can add more symbols by clicking on the More Symbols button, finding something that I'm interested in, and selecting one of these predefined symbol types. Or if I'd rather, I can start creating my own. And an easy way to do this with a point symbol is by selecting one of the simple shapes, giving it a color that I think works well on my map, then going to Properties, and from here I can actually use the same shape in a slightly bigger point size as a sort of mask. So down here I have the option to add an overlapping symbol. So if I click the plus sign, I can set the symbol shape to be the same as the one I've previously selected and maybe I make this one a little bigger and now if I reorder these two I should now start to see kind of halo effect being applied. Clearly black probably doesn't work as well as a lighter color for my halo, at least for this map. So I click on another color and now click OK and I now have a nice symbol that represents my clinics. Now if that's something that I like and I want to use it again, I follow the same steps I did with my polygon symbology. I click Save give it a symbol name and I want to give it the same category name. If I give it a different category name I'll have duplicate categories and so I want to remember what I typed the first time and hit OK. And now that symbol will be available to me again when I come back.